At this point in Nuber's journey in Legus, he was at an intermediary time. Protectors were killed, chaos was growing, and both great roots had been chopped. Nuber decided that he would begin exploring more rugged areas of Legus, hoping to find an entity known as the Great Shocker. The said thing powered Umaguligar, the chaos leader's durable force field. Its destruction would make the fight more feasible, but still uphill. But for now, Nuber had to set off officially on his minor expedition. He slept next to a few deceased warding balls because of the comfort they give off as a once living being, exuding a pleasant aura. Unlike in the past, Nuber recalled his Ultra Great Sword's location and reacquired it before his trip. He was too far into his quest to lose it all now. He had made the decision that a northwestward direction was favored for the excursion, as he had never truly been in that way for much of a distance before. What Nuber had observed before he got to the site was materializing, though, and Nuber was not fond of it. A large fence was blocking the passageway through the forest that led northwest. There was obviously some kind of locking mechanism attached to its body, made of metal. When Nuber was close enough to the gate of the fence to see this, he opened up the metal latch to open the gate. This was only after a minor altercation with his sword, of course. But, when Nuber attempted to open up the gate after unlocking the hatch, there was little movement. There was flexing occurring, but that was just because of the wood used in the construction long ago. Nuber saw no other locking mechanisms, and the gate was separate from that side of the fence entirely. You could see down the crack. It was just like the door was an uninterrupted section of fence, never physically disconnected. This was obviously untrue. Nuber continued to use all of his effort to try to pull open the door, and his colossal strength was defeat. After a while, Nuber gave up, as he knew that if he had not gotten it in the first few tries, the next hundred would be a waste of time. He tried to look around for an alternative exit, but the west side was too steep after Finn's termination, and the east side extended for an eternity down the horizon. There was no escape. After the hearty workout, Nuber went to a familiar sitting rock to contemplate his next action. He just needed a better, chunkier, and paunchier club-like individual to smash the gate down. If that didn't work, then Nuber believed that some sort of Lagusian magic was at play. Maybe it was being sorcerously held shut? As you can see in his self-admiration, Nuber was completely confident in his physical ability, so maybe the gate was designed specifically for the strong and dumb. Nuber was definitely not the latter, though. Despite this, he still wanted to try to become frenzied on the door's physical body, and he found the perfect weapon to do so. An actual, natural wooden hammer. The thing was massive, weighing over 10 pounds. If anything had the ability to break something, it was that thing. Despite what some fools believe, when it comes down to it, a huge stick is the best tool for breaking bones. Nuber's first attempts left the door locked, as he just wanted to see if the mallet could break the wood pickets themselves. Dishearteningly, no damage was passed from his tool to the fence. Nuber then unlocked the door, giving the hammer one last shot of fame. He put all of his weight into his swings, but the gate still would not budge. Nuber was eager to access the forest beyond the gate, but he simply could not go around its stature or climb its sharp peaks. After a multitude of swings, Nuber realized that his previous thoughts were being confirmed. Something else was at play here. But, being Nuber, rage was present after his idea failed. Nuber was never okay with things out of his control, and he traditionally took frustration out in the destruction of innocent objects. Right as he was in a temper tantrum, though, Nuber saw something that could help him in the long run. The thing protruded from the ground like a totem pole. 
The thing in question was an altar-like stump, positioned almost perfectly in relation to the gate, as to have a relationship with it. Newbert instantly knew what to do with it. Offer it something. His first attempt was going to be the hammer he found earlier, because he believed it held long-fading power of the good times of Legus. He had thrown it far into a field because of his rage, though. Once he returned to the natural altar, Newbert placed the item on its head and oriented it towards the sealed gate. He had to ensure it would not fall, discounting the transaction and possibly permanently ruining Newbert's plans. Once it was placed securely, Newbert positioned himself by the gate, unlocked it, and attempted to make it ajar. But the offering clearly had failed, as the gate was firmly held shut by some non-physical force. He still tried to force the gate agape by pulling, as the offering could have weakened the elemental lock. But alas, nothing happened. Newbert had never experienced such rage in a singular day in his time in Legus up until this point, and it was harming his productivity. He concluded that he required another cool-off session of resting and thinking to ease his spirit. He returned to the area near a sleeping site where dead warding balls were clustered together. The entire situation seemed beyond him, but he was determined to pass the gate. One thought occurred to him, though. He looked back to the ball clump and retreated to there. He thought that the remaining chaotic energy of a once-living ball could be enough to stimulate the altar and alter the closed gate. Upon arrival to the balls, Nuber noticed an additional character. A large orange specimen was draped across some wooden railing, clearly dead from a large slice wound. For some reason, warding balls seemed to cluster at that specific location. Nuber was not opposed to that fact. After tasting the difference between the long dead and recent victim, Newber set off to return to the altar with another promising offering. Eep. Eep. The trek back was short, only a few hundred feet. Newber was eager to apply the ball to the shrine, and even more excited about the likelihood of the gate being released. Something just seemed right about this attempt. It was not going to fail. Newber backed away to witness a potential outcome. Newber was proud about his problem solving skills and was ready to tackle the dense forest beyond. He grabbed his sword and looked at the gate mechanism in front of him. There was simply nothing there. He couldn't figure out what was holding the gate shut but truly did not care at this point. He looked off into the distance and realized that there was a lot of ground to cover in the expansive, unmapped land. But he saw something in the sky that caught his retina. There was a massive stick lodged in a pine's branches. It was only hovering by a hair and could be easily knocked off of its helpers. At least, Nuber thought. Despite only being feet into the forest, Nuber was now fixated on getting this body down from the grasp of the ancient pine. He returned to his local region of exploration to re-retrieve the obese mallet. He aimed to hit the suspended branch with the club, which he thought would easily knock it down. There was only one problem. Gravity. Either the hammer or the newfound stick could come down on Nuber, potentially hurting him. This was only a minor risk, though. Nuber thought to himself. His first throw sailed over the target, but Nuber always gets better over time at all things, exponentially faster than others do. The reason behind Nuber's desire to obtain the tree club was found in the fact that some branches of the Great Pine's descendants are blessed with its power. The Great Pine is the parent of Legus and is eternal. It is a hub of non-chaotic energy which clashes with and is effective against chaotic energy, like the kind produced by Umigulagar, as he is Chaos Leader. The Great Pine has been dying over time in Legus, to the point that it could not maintain equilibrium in the Empire, allowing Chaos to take hold and spread. This is what brought Nuber to Legus in the first place, 
as the pine's last effort to alleviate the chaos. Therefore, because of the nature of the pine, any piece of it is extremely effective against beings of the chaos like Umigulagar. Fighting him with a non-chaotic weapon is like using magnets. He is repelled. The repulsion is more than physical though. It is biological, spiritual, and wholly complete. This would give Nuber a massive advantage in the fight, possibly even greater than the chopping of the Great Roots and the destruction of the Great Chakra. What Nuber did not realize is that the descendants of the Great Pine have to be directly from it, not from its children's pines. The sticks off of the Great Pine bear its properties, but the sticks found on the Great Pine's offspring trees are not special. So, the stick that Nuber is working for now is likely just a piece of scrap wood, and a weak one at that. Nuber was just so excited after the miraculous gate opening that the first thing he saw in the forest had to be good, even if it wasn't. And with the gate opening, it is possible that the entire system was just an amateur project, possibly a future member of the Lagusian archives. The creator could have been exploring the relationship between life and energy, voiding the chance of anything important being sealed away behind the useless gate. Something truly valuable would be locked behind a less obvious solution than offering the word at all. But nevertheless, Nuber was still proud. After many attempts of knocking the Great Club down, it was not budging meaningfully. Nuber is just going to present one more throw as he was running out of daylight. He wouldn't predict the outcome. Nuber had given a chance for the dense hammer to come down on his torso, and with all of its mass, Nuber was entering and exiting consciousness. The weight of the mallet had created a substantial cavity in Nuber's chest, and he forced his hand into it to measure its depth. He deduced that it was survivable, but he needed to eat to have nutrients in his body to repair the damage fully. Nuber knew of no established feeding locations in his local region, so he had to press on into the forest in an attempt to find nutrition. It could be anything, from a grub to a bear, but food was necessary for survival. It would be a shame for Nuber to die from a completely self-caused accidental event. He began traveling in the opposite direction of the fence gate, northwest. Shrubbery was all around, and toxic, oily plants lined the soil, making travel difficult. On top of this, Nuber had an injury to compress, relieving one hand of most duties for the time being. It could only be removed for short periods of time, but preferably none. Once Nuber had moved about a hundred feet into the woods, he encountered a large, fallen tree, offspring of the Great Pine. It was many feet in circumference, and was a couple of feet tall. It provided a bridge over a small valley to another section of forest, and also led to a promising rotten tree. The aforementioned putrid stalk could be home to insects that could aid Nuber. However, if Nuber lost his balance, all could be over, as parts of the tree were almost ten feet off of the ground. Once Nuber became intimate with the fetid tree, he began examining its exterior for any evidence of bugs or larvae. This was not before looking down to invigorate his adrenaline and keep him safer in the face of danger, though. For some reason, the particular rancid tree seemed more afflicted than the others, as if it was a beacon of some sort of putrefactive force. Whatever the case, Nuber was relieved to have potential access to some food in the short term. He believed that the fungi lining the tree's outer wall were a foul sign that vital organisms lived within. This strange, red, velvety entity seemed like food, but also seemed toxic in nature, so it was luckily avoided. Despite the bad omen, Nuber continued his search for food in the rotting trunk, to no avail. All of the Lagusian creatures had left their organic homes, and had likely died. The only living organisms left were decomposers, things that fed on past life like leeches. Sadly, it was difficult to differentiate types of fungi, with some causing death and others being helpful. It was all a gamble, and Nuber still had some time to search the forest for resources. He went out on the tree, but it was unstable. This revelation caused Nuber to go back to the other landmass he was on originally. <coughs> He just had to find something, and his body could use its energy to regenerate his collapsed chest and abdomen. Only sheer luck prevented his death initially, as a headshot would have certainly instantly put an end to him. 
Now, he slowly walks Run. back on the fallen tree to the solid ground awaiting him at the end of the line. Since more time had passed, he was getting desperate. Newbert decided to continue pressing northwest, and the bush was just getting thicker. Movement was becoming cumbersome, and actual pain was setting in. Newbert can generally hold off on immense pain to give him a chance at thinking rationally, but that brief time of logic was quickly ending. At this point, Newbert would eat anything he came across, which was a dangerous concern. This was especially the case if the thing that he came across was harmful. This deep in the woodlands, there are many dangerous plants, specifically fungi, that surround dead and dying trees. These beings are brightly colored and attract other insects to them. Apparently, they also attract Newbert to them. Unbeknownst of the danger, Newbert was excited to see something resembling food. He deposited his sword and bent down to investigate and ingest. When on the ground, Newbert tapped the individuals with a stick, checking their sponginess. He also saw a yellow sphere, partially decayed. It appeared to be in the shape and size of a golf ball, but was softer and grotesque in nature. The fungal bodies were bright orange, sticking out in the natural hues of the forested area. Newbert consumed the first mentioned item, and then moved on to the fungus. He pulled one piece up from the main body of an individual, and began eating. It tasted earthy to Newbert, like a mix between dirt and jello. Newbert felt completely fine while eating, contradictory to his later experiences. Oh. Oh, so good. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. You. 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 After eating, Newber grabbed his sword and left the area. He was going to return to his local Lagusian region and rest to allow his body to heal. He appreciated the fungal bodies, and instead of smashing them in a typical fashion, he gracefully grazed their tops as a form of affection. Since Newber was never truly too far from the gate, his journey back to home ground was short. After traversing the last of the thick brush, Newber made his way through the gate and to his familiar sitting rock. He was prepared to get a good sleep through the night. Little did he know, it would be more of a help me through the night. Once Newber got to the sitting rock, he deposited himself and began to feel strange. Looking around was painful and interesting at the same time. With odd visual abnormalities forming by the second, Newber's face became not his own, and he threw his sword down like the madman that he now was. Something that he had consumed was changing him, and rapidly at that. At least it gave him time to exit the dense woods, as without that time, Newber may have been in serious danger. Now, it was more of a nuisance than anything else. This was worse than the impact of the massive mallet, but on the outside, only happiness was showing. When seen from Newber's perspective, though, one can only feel sympathy. Newber found himself lying incorrectly on the sitting rock upon waking up, and he remembered everything about the past day. He began thinking about Umagulagar rather than potentially dangerous side tasks. He was so close to conquering the Empire of Ligus that that death would have been the worst possible outcome, possibly worse than even having no savior at all. Nuber was that savior, and it was time he began acting like it. Hitting himself with a stick? Really? Nuber was struggling on even basic tasks, emboldening the Chaos Leader. Nuber knew. This was going to end. Now.
Mm-hmm. Yeah.